According to all known laws of taxonomy, Pokemon is kind of dumb. Let me explain. So, about six months ago, I got this idea of a new way to teach about taxonomy, specifically early forms of taxonomy, before we had DNA. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, taxonomy is the way that we classify animals and determine relationships between animals themselves and their ancestors. You know, kingdom, phylum, class, and so on. Before DNA was used to determine these relations, people would look at two animals and essentially think, yeah, I, I bet they could be brothers, or at least half-brothers, or something like that. And that's how they would determine relations. They would essentially look at these animals and determine which ones had the most qualities alike because logically that would mean that they're most closely related. This was also before concepts like convergent evolution were largely known in the scientific community. To teach about the science of not only taxonomy but divergence and other concepts, an idea came to me about teaching concepts about animals through video games. Today, we're gonna start this journey with one of the most beloved creature collecting games of all time, Pokemon. This brings me to the purpose of today, establishing how taxonomy would look in the Pokemon world. This will serve as a lesson in thinking of what we would do if these concepts were in our world, as well as establishing concepts for future lessons. Let's start out with thinking about what the basics of taxonomy looks like in the Pokemon world. For the most part, many creatures in Pokemon have direct parallels in our world, whether that be the entire line or just one individual. For example, we could look at a Pokemon like Caterpie, who evolves in the Pokemon sense into Butterfree. This is a very simple concept in our world and one that most people are familiar with. These Pokemon are distinctly insects in the order Lepidoptera. On the other hand, we can look at Pokemon like Drowsy. Drowsy can be identified as a type of taper. However, his line ends in a Pokemon called Hypno, which sort of looks like a vaguely human creature. And for the purposes of these lessons, we'll be talking about Pokemon lines uh, as, as one creature as they grow through their life into the later forms. And we'll be also identifying these lines with one discernible stage of a Pokemon as that group for the sake of sim simplicity. So in Drowsy's case, we are going to identify him as a taper, even though the end of his line is a different creature. Speaking of Hypno, uh, a common theme in Pokemon is to anthropomorphize animals or make them look like humans in a way. For the purposes of this project, this will not be grounds to separate species, just because it's so common. These guidelines that we're setting also provide us with some cool lessons about the real world but also some challenges. Let's look at the picky pack line. Now at first you look at this and think, a woodpecker evolving into a toucan? That's absurd. But upon closer inspection, you might find that this is actually a really cool example of a real world parallel, as toucans are actually a really close relative of woodpeckers, both residing in the order Picaformes, which is likely where the name picky pack came from. However, there are also lines that don't make much sense with the most extreme case, in my opinion, being Remoraid and Octillery, a fish, the Remora, becoming a cephalopod, an octopus. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In cases like this, we found that referencing the adult form of the species would be the easiest way to go. Unless the majority of the line is one animal and the adult is another animal, such as the Slackoth line, who's uh, a sloth that evolves into a gorilla. With cases like these, we'll highlight them as they come up in future videos. The next thing I want to cover is the Pokemon that are not creatures in our world. Creatures like dragons, fairies, ghosts, walking plants, man-made creatures, aliens, extra-dimensional beings, and even living rock creatures, just to name a few. The simple answer for many of these is just establishing new branches of evolution from existing branches we're familiar with. While many will come up later, I did want to address one in particular, plants. Plants already exist in our world. And the plants in our world don't use leech seed or dance around. 
To complicate things more, there are also non-Pokemon plants in the Pokemon universe as well. If I were to realistically classify these in our world, I would likely come up with a new phylum under Animalia, the, the kingdom Animalia, as animals that have developed a plant-like quality. Or I would develop a new phylum under the kingdom Plantae, where a common ancestor developed sentience. However, for simplicity, as well as for educational purposes, I'll be treating them all as Plantae, despite the likelihood of this being the case being extraordinarily low if this was real. As we finish up this lesson, I wanted to highlight a category of creatures that we will not be classifying. Creatures that are either man-made, aliens to our world, or ones from another dimension. Starting with man-made creatures, we have Ditto, the Porygon line, Mewtwo, Magearna, and the type Null line. My logic with this is that none of these creatures can reproduce, with the exception of Porygon. And that I would argue most would agree that if someone created a Frankenstein-esque creature, even if it continued to grow, it wouldn't be considered its own species. Nextly, we're going to talk about the aliens and extra-dimensional creatures. This includes the Clefaline, Lunatone, Solrock, Deoxys, the Elgium line, the Cosmog line, all of the Ultra Beasts, including the Krosma and the Poipole line, Eternatus, uh, Giratina, Arceus, Palkia, Dialga, and potentially Minior, although this can be debated because in the Pokedex it does talk about it forming an art atmosphere, but I would argue that because that's not a branching form of uh, life, that it can be considered an alien. Obviously, being from different worlds or dimensions, these cannot be directly related to species in the Pokemon world, thus they're exempt from this project. Another note that I wanted to add here is that at the current time in the production of Pokemon, the Paradox Pokemon are unclear if it's a different dimensional creature or if it's actually from the future past of the current dimension. Until the future DLCs come out, and we get more answers, this will likely remain up in the air. Um, now, I get that this was a long video and, and that this was a, a lot to cover, but um, this first video allows us to establish these concepts that we can then use in future videos to teach about um, those concepts without needing to revisit these concepts. Um, this video will provide a, a jumping off point for the rest of our videos. If you're interested in this sort of thing, or other lessons that relate directly to video games and to actual scientific concepts, uh, hit the subscribe button, like, and follow this journey of ours. Um, this is something new we're trying out, but I think it'll be a lot of fun and it should be really cool um, to teach about these things in a different way than I have in the past. Um, if this is something you're interested in, let us know. Ask us some questions down in the comments. Otherwise, if there's anything that we covered in this video that you disagree with or you have questions about, write them down in the comments. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, or cover things in future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.